probably the biggest hit of the summer of Inside Out 2. Now, this is a complicated movie for me because I really, really, really liked it, but I disagree with some of the creative choices. And part of that is because Inside Out is my number two favorite Pixar film of all time. It's easily in my top five animated films of all time, and it was my number one film of the entire 2010s decade. Like, I am so attached to the original film and how wonderfully it expressed emotion in visual terms to the point where you can't help but not only fall in love with the with the characters inside Riley said, but with Riley herself. So I didn't think a sequel was needed. I didn't think we needed new emotions because it just felt like marketing. And once we decided on that, we have anxiety who we now have to retcon into the series. And you didn't need a villain for these films. There, there are some takes and, and critiques that say that she's not a villain, but she does literal, you know, bottom line villainous things. Like she runs an animation sweatshop. She she kicks the, the, the core five out of Riley's head for disagreeing with her for all of like five seconds after she shows up. She's a villain. She's a sympathetic villain, but she's a villain all the same. You know, and maybe there's a meta point to be made about having, you know, this freakish, you know, insecure orange interloper coming in and demanding fealty to whatever their plans are and and laying waste to the world if you don't agree and causing panic attacks. Maybe there's something to that. I don't know. But once those decisions are made, once they go down this path, they handle it beautifully. Riley's transition into adolescence and the awkwardness of trying to fit in with a new group of friends, we've all been there. The climax where she literally has a panic attack. I went to the hospital for those. I know what those feel like. They nailed it. While most of the new emotions are barely cameos, um, like basically Io Edabiri as uh, as um, Envy is probably the only one who gets any significant screen time apart from anxiety. They are still fun for what they are, uh, espe especially uh, June Squibb comes in for two quick blips as Nostalgia, which is a nice little dig at Disney's machine, you know, to make Disney billions of dollars. So, and while, while Tony Hale is a great voice actor, he doesn't make up for Bill Hader not being there. Uh, but I do like that that anger, disgust, and fear are more active characters this time. Like there's there's a whole lot more abstract concepts that are depicted in novel and profound ways. The quest to get back to Riley from wherever they're ejected to is compelling in the extreme. And there is something to be said about embracing the things that make you off in a way like that like that the message of the of the first movie was embrace your loving darkness embrace sadness as a part of growing up and know that it's not a negative emotion no matter how it might be presented this is more about as you grow there's going to be quirks about you there's going to be things that are a little bit weird and awkward and off-putting and you need to embrace those too, and you need to learn to cope with it. Um, again, some of these things weren't needed, but once they did it, they did it right. And while it's not top tier Pixar, it's the best we've gotten in a while. And in a studio that has a kind of hit and miss record with sequels, like, this is much closer to Incredibles 2, Toy Story 2 than it is to Monsters University or Cars 2 or Finding Dory. So I I was I was very uh I was very pleased with it. This is the BTRP Media Network.